in to extent like long term intended to be like variety, but kind of in the more mid term, like I will have whatever game is my game for the time being, I'll play for a while kind of thing. Because especially if I'm not playing like a game as a service kind of game or an MMO or ARPG, like those games that constantly adapt and change and grow, you do know you're on borrowed time in the sense that unless that game keeps evolving in some way, there will be a point that people get done with that game. And then you're effectively having to start over your growth. Not really. You, you'll have a bunch of people will stick around because they like you, like the way you do your stream or they're just really into it or whatever. But um, for those who are there for that specific game content, they will float. Which, which again, I understand. When I'm looking for one specific game's content, I will do the exact same thing. Like, no fault to anyone for that. That's just the nature of the beast. But yeah, I am, I am very much appreciating all the love and support. I forgot to turn off the radio last night. So we just drain the battery a bunch, which is fine, because we'll start it, and it'll be good. I am getting really nervous that we should have had a helicopter by now, and we still haven't. And that's starting to make me pretty nervous that the helicopter is going to show up at a very inopportune time. And that'll be a whole thing. But it is what it is. So it sounds like we do an art push today. Tomorrow we want to backtrack because we got thick fog rolling in. So we don't want to be caught in that if we can help it. Oh, you're just going to give me a hunting knife? I'm sure as hell not going to complain about that. And as I've mentioned, when it comes to pushing into new cities, cities in these settings, it does feel like you make no progress for a long time. We're just kind of re-clearing the same road again again. Um, that is because the zombies that are not directly on the road kind of migrate out to it. But uh, after a good couple passes, you kind of wiped out all the zombies that can reach the road readily. And you just start seeing less and less zombies. Um, I do want to quickly go like this. Alright, so we're down here. Okay, so we want to clean this route as our way back, so I don't have to drive through the boot camp every time. But yeah, we're making good progress. We were just, like, here's here's the beginning of Rosewood. We were just outside Rosewood. So we're making good progress there. Um, what do you game... Let's see. What do you game in your multiple days... Uh, one second, I'll have to catch up on that. I have this big horde here. Like, I had a horde on either side, so I want to make sure we deal with this first. And then I'll catch up and chat. Okay, uh, Sander says, What do you do in-game when you have multiple days of very crap weather, considering zombie killing is not ideal during a four to five day blizzard fog or heavy rain? Uh, usually those are the days I work on skills, especially these crafting skills. That's actually how we got like tailoring and carpentry, and not so much cooking, that kind of came along, but the tailoring and carpentry up, as well as the mechanic in that we made. So like when I have absolutely crap weather, I'll be like, all right, well, 
you know, I need to get my mechanic skill up. We're just going to go to, like, the cars I have here near my base and just work on those. Or, okay, you know, my tailoring's not quite where I want it. Let me go ahead and do some tailoring real fast. Like, I might grab supplies in advance for it or whatever. But you get the idea. Those are days that I back away from the zombie killing and I work on other stuff that supports my zombie killing. Because, like, I want to get mechanic and... That spear didn't even last long for a spear. But, um... You know, I'll work on some of that other stuff just because what will end up happening is, uh, over time I'm going to wear this car out as I, you know, hit the occasional zombie or bump into other stuff. Like, it'll wear out, and I'll have to deal with that. So I'm going to want mechanical and metalworking to deal with that problem. So those are just days I work on all the support skills. I mean, honestly, even if I were to get to the point that, like, all of my crafting skills were at 10, like, I didn't have something productive I could do, I would probably just go into, like, a base decor kind of base building where we go, okay, we're looking for new flooring for a building. Let's decide our flooring and make it. Like, I would find not dangerous stuff to do in the meantime till the weather passes. Because we absolutely do when, like, a tropical storm rolls in or whatever. I'll quite often, especially very thick fog. Very thick fog, I will I will back out of a fight immediately. It's just too easy for things to go south. But uh, we'll drop back, and we'll just do stuff around home, whatever. Because I was joking that at the rate we've been finding katanas, that I might make like a katana showroom. It's like up on the second floor, just build up an entire room that's just... Shelves of katanas. It's also nice because like when you meat grinder these zombies day in and day out, even just having like that one day where it's like, oh, it's crap weather. It's like, all right, but now I get kind of a breather from the meat grinder to do something else. And it keeps it fresher that way. Because if we just did meat grind the zombies always every single day start to finish you know we'd get very bored and tired all right so we're basically out of food that kind of does work out for us right now well, the reason that works out is we do know we got the back out anyway so yeah yeah I haven't so in multiplayer the group I'm playing with, we started setting up our base in the Rosewood Fire Station. Now, as far as like actual playthroughs, I had had one attempt at a 16x pop that were like, you know what? Let's try. To... Can you edit item names? Um, some item names, yes. Like you can name your backpack, that kind of stuff. Uh, why do you ask? Like I. You know, I've I've jokingly like had one person where they were like, oh yeah, like, like let me let me name my bag after you, and I did it once, like just for last. I'm probably not going to do it because how long you have a run for that you'd have stuff named like that, and there's just not enough available. Like Rimworld, I don't mind because you know you get several pawns, some of them die, some of them get replaced, all that. So it's like okay, you can name a lot of stuff after a lot of people. It doesn't feel that bad. Versus like this, it's like okay, I'll only have like two or three backpacks. And that'll be, like, all I can name. Or, like, a meal I will name, and then I will eat it, and it'll disappear. So I think what we're going to do is, instead of continuing to push Riverside directly, I'm going to clear this other route that allows me to go around the boot camp. Interger Smirk says it would be cool to see how many uh, kills each katana get. Just enter the name. It's like that would be cool. The thing I'd have to do is actually pay attention to that. Because usually I get it, I just start slaughtering zombies and I don't stop to like write down how many kills I had before and after. So usually it's like how many katana you know kills is it's like I think three hundred. Wow. So 
So I'd, I'd have to have someone else do that. Yeah. I would probably make it a, like for again for RimWorld, absolutely, because there's so much stuff you can rename so easily, no problem. Uh, City Skylines, and we played more of that. Again, so many buildings to rename. I wouldn't feel bad because like there's just a lot of stuff there for people to be named after. Cool. For Project Zomboy, there's just not enough items to rename because like you can't rename all things. There's there's a lot of stuff you cannot give names. Just certain stuff. I heard them coming. Yeah, as I thought, we got the zombies closing in from all sides. I don't really get why this, like, sometimes it happens just because your vehicle's noisy. Other times you'll be, like, being fairly quiet and you'll just have zombies closing from all sides. Like, what's ha like, what drew you here? I know there isn't a mechanic that says, like, home in on player. The closest you get is the helicopter, because that's just kind of how it ends up. was close. I'm I'm a little surprised we got out of range of that grab, honestly. That zombie come from the side was not a good time. Also, how are we not exerted yet? I should be at least well into moderate exertion. What? There you go. I was like, I, I'm feeling way overdue for the exertion. I'm not complaining, but I don't understand why it was taking so long to get there. A 100 quality ambulance engine worth it with a loudness of 90 cents? It depends on how much you care about loudness. I mean, 100 is amazing for quality, first of all. Um, for me personally, I consider the loudness an asset for what I'm doing, but for most playthroughs that's probably not the case. Most playthroughs drawing all the zombies that are around you, not really your goal. That said, if I had an engine that was like Loudness 97 and I could get like an absolute crap muffler on it, that might be strategically useful for me. Because then I can just roll around it's basically like I'm blasting a horn at full volume. And just like that, we deleted another, like, hundred zombies. It's what, just what we do. Ah, I don't want to mess with you. Come out of the trees. Yeah, so it's able to turn off, like, all the stuff with weapon condition indicator except for the little arrow appears. I think that's fine. I still don't know, like, if it's about to break. Because, like, like I said earlier, I do actually 
like those mods, um, minimal display bar, weapon condition indicator for quality of life reasons and all that. Like I very much like them. Uh, but people like we did have like talking with Royal. He's like, you know, I wonder like how much of a difference that makes in your playstyle. And I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't think it's that much, but I'm gonna find out. I still do think what we'll do is um, whenever this run ends, win or lose, uh, we will start one painful year with the one caveat is I will not be doing the Pitch Black Night, not because I'm afraid of the darkness, but because it'd be absolutely awful to watch with the Pitch Black Darkness. Like, I know you still get the cone and all that you can see, but it, it wouldn't be great viewing, in my opinion. But I'll give that a go. Yeah, like, I get for playing... Pitch back darkness, like all right, yeah, that's a challenge. That's interesting, cool. For viewing, absolutely not. And I've I've had a number of people who they actually came to my stream saying it was like, oh, I was watching this person, but now they're doing that one painful year and they got to pitch blast darkness, and I just I can't watch it. I'm like yeah, and I've had that repeated a number of times. So I'm like yeah, I'm definitely not going to do pitch black darkness. I mean, honestly, I keep my own display dark enough that when you have a properly dark night, I can't really see in the first place. It's just the gamma that lets all of you see, where I've got turned up on a filter. So it really wouldn't make that much difference. When you can't see, you can't see. Usually in those really dark times, I mostly play by sound. Yeah, Zidian says, I have glare, high glare due to office setup. Pitch black darkness may be what... Uh, may have been literally monitor off. Yeah. I can't kill him. It says, I wish gym lockers had loot. Stuff like granola bars, water, vitamins, etc. I agree. Like, to me, it bothers me more that they're empty regardless of what they put in there. I wouldn't mind if it was gym clothes. I wouldn't mind if it had, like... The occasional like granola bar or packed lunch or you know drinks like I don't care what they put them it's just when you go into a room it's like oh look at all these containers let's go and then you go and there's not a single thing in any of it and you're like why did these exist are you telling me at the time the zombie apocalypse broke out not one of these had anything in it a locker because I sure as hell know as a student when like both in high school as well as when I did sporting stuff there was crap I kept in that locker 24-7. Like, that I just left at school in case I needed it or whatever. Or, you know, I would swap my my at-home stuff for my at-school stuff and vice versa. When I got to school. The point being, they wouldn't all be empty. You might find an empty locker where someone's just like, yeah, I don't... Like, I keep all my stuff in my backpack, why would I go to my locker? Because as far as school stuff, other than like the beginning and the end of the day, that's how mine was. None of my classes were near my locker or with the locker in between. So my approach to lockers were... I grabbed my stuff first thing in the morning, and then I didn't see my locker again until the end of the day. Because it was like, I just dragged everything with me, which was terrible for your back.
Uh, my g got myself a Wii Woo truck and a new station wagon, says Hoko, so excellent. Everyone wants a Wii Woo truck. And if you don't want, you don't think you want a Wii Woo truck, you just, you haven't figured it out yet. You'll get there. Alright, yeah, we're, we're properly out of food now. Deserted soon. The cloud cover is really annoying because when it goes over its shade, it's kind of hard to see. Huh. Guess we're not going to be exerted. Uh, Zane says, one of my one of the kids in my school dislocated his shoulder really badly uh, with his satchel backpack, keeping his entire locker of stuff in his bag all day carrying it. Yep. So I had like a proper backpack, but even then, there was like, I remember there was a whole thing on the news at the time that they are finding all sorts of kids with back problems because they were carrying, you know, six or seven textbooks in their back. Um, I know it reduces the stamina usage. Like, that I know for a fact. I would assume it makes you faster as well, but I've almost never leveled it meaningful. I'm, I'm pretty sure it makes you faster and reduces stamina use. Like, the stamina use I know is because it's actually big. Yep, nope, I'm, uh... I mean... I was in school in the 90s as well. Alright, they tried to sneak up behind and intercept it. I'm actually getting really surprised we're not pushing exerted nearly as much as I thought we would. Mostly I'm expecting those like times we managed to sit in our car, we're not getting a whole lot of time. Uh, Xander says, I've noticed you are not resting at all between big packs. Kinda got that habit of resting from cheese and like it playing safer. Any specific reason you don't rest? Uh, mostly because I have to bring a chair with me to carry and drop it. Not really a specific reason. Uh, and the other thing is I usually do quite a bit of short blades. And with short blades, rest is irrelevant. Okay, so yeah, we're right on the fence of being moderately exerted. So that's fine. We just switch to our short blades and we keep fighting. But yeah, now it's just my strategy is to rely on short blades way more. Because like a hunting knife, I can keep fighting and I will gain stamina during the fight. 
you know, barring if I manage to land absolutely every single attack as fast as possible. But that's usually not realistic. Hey, Tiny Kona, how's it going? So are other people resting? I'm stabbing stuff with a knife. And you'll have noticed, like, that last pipe hit, we had just barely poked into moderate exertion. And we will not see moderate exertion again by the time this pack is done unless something goes dire. Like, if I end up pushing the zombies, that, that takes a decent amount of stamina. I don't like that. But if we're just doing knife hits, we shouldn't see uh, exerted again. And each zombie is two to three hits with the knife right now. We will eventually get down to one to two with a lot of them being single hits. Alright, we pushed it, so I assume there's no one aggroed somewhere. It Sometimes it happens if you kill one and then immediately go for the next one. It'll still count the one that you just killed as that. Uh, let's say. Uh, Tiny Kona says, Yeah, I've been using some short blades and it's been fun. It reminds me a lot of Walking Dead. Excellent. Uh, Xandor says, Makes sense. If your weapon uses less stamina than from your regeneration. Yep, it's, it's a good tip. I know there's some play players who are very much like, Oh god, don't use short blades. They're suicide. I've, I've had no problems. I've never once had the execution animation get me in any kind of real trouble. Like, never never once been hit or killed from the execution animation. I've never had, like, do the execution animation and get a, take an injury. I've had people who I would trust report that that's the thing. Um, I am trying to come to the bottom of why that happens, if it happens anymore. I'm, I'm, I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, my two theories are one, it was a thing, and that's been resolved. Like, it's just not a thing anymore. Or two, that there is some way that you can have it happen. That animation right there is the one they're saying that they're getting bitten and killed on. But I have done that thousands of times. Uh, Zidane says, I made 1,500 hunting knife spears to try out the crazed on spears. Holy crap, those are death traps. Yeah, so spears, the thing you have to be super careful about is the execution animation on spears. I haven't had it actually get me in trouble. But I've had it get to me a point where I'm staring at it going, please, just let me go. Where I'm holding running the other direction, watching a zombie close the gap. And and you know you're just locked in place because of the animation. I want to back up. Yeah, that's what I figured. There's going to be zombies closing in behind us. Just trying to spot them before they did. Because we'll tunnel out this way and then we'll turn around. Okay, we're good. Because I prefer to fight with the zombies on one side of me if I can make it happen. Sometimes you can't. Usually you can. Barring when you first start. A lot of times when you first start in the middle of the city, there's just no getting them on one side. You just have to deal. I usually walk away and come back when I've got better, uh, better positioning. I am glad I switched to clearing this side versus pushing Rosewood, because we have fought a lot more this way than I anticipated. Which I guess I should have anticipated. Alright, um, let's see. Let's see, I'm kiting 100, then one walks up on the side and I go into an execute to kill him. Yeah, that gets super scary. Uh, Xander says, was going to say, I still haven't seen you doing the... What second? I haven't seen you do the execute animation. Is it because you attack while going backwards? You skip the execution animation? I'll explain the execution animation in two seconds. There's a couple things that go into that. Azidian said, or it traps me on the ground animation, even though there's 25 around me. 
the thing that really sketches me out with short blade is stabbing a zombie on the ground that takes eight years that i agree with el goso stabbing the zombies on the ground is a lot like you need like, it takes so long a lot of times i'll actually walk up and i'll stomp on them if zombies are nearby just because of how slow that stab animation is when they're on the ground uh, i can't kill anything honestly when I went to the start of Build 41, it was basically every weapon, then short blades and spear trapped me in place with like five zombies and grabbing distance, and I just don't want to use them anymore. On the plus side, the other weapons have knocked down. Yeah, and that's what I think that's what I think has happened, is I think there was a period of time that maybe hunting knives and that had a problem with their execution that would get you killed, and maybe that's been resolved. Where spears is kind of dicey. Like again, I haven't had it to the point where it's gotten me killed, but I have had it to the point where I'm just going like holding shift the other direction going oh god please let me go and I always manage to get away as the zombies grabbing so it wouldn't surprise me if the the spear one can absolutely get you killed if you have like something that slows down your run speed now as far as the um the execution animation goes so there's a couple things unlike spears the short blades will only execution animation if you have one zombie aggroed or if you're like not a position your character would be aware that they're aggro. So like if I was around a corner from a zombie, I could execution animation and the zombie around the corner could, you know, step around the corner just in time to grab me kind of thing. Which point my argument there would be it's not the execution animation that's the problem. You're standing against a corner with zombies on it. But um so I could sit here all day with a hunting knife on this whole pack, standing still. And I shouldn't get the execution animation until I'm down to the last one. Alright, we pushed it. Yeah, so you saw we didn't execution. We pushed it. Versus the last one we'll execute. Um, and it does also, if I am walking backwards, like backwards decides anything but standing still, you won't do the execution animation either. You have to, you have to stop moving to do it with knives. Uh, spears, the rules are all different. Alright, we didn't meaningfully get to sit in there, so I'm just going to assume we're basically still tapped out in stamina. Because you will notice, I do back up on every hit just about with the hunting knife. And that's actually most weapons, I'll back up as I swing. And the big reason I do that is just in case I flat out whiff the swing, don't hit the target. It usually means that they try to go for the grab, I'm already stepping out of the range of the grab, so I'm not in any real danger. But yeah, like I said, I can do that all day. I've I've never been hurt by that. So that's that's the one that makes me curious, especially Cheese saying, you know, he personally has had it happen. Like I 100% trust that if Cheese says it's happened to him, that it's happened to him. Like, cheese, cheese wouldn't say that if it didn't happen. So that's what makes me curious, is like, what is the circumstances that it goes wrong and you get hurt while doing that animation? And like, what, what have I done to evade those? Um, I'm probably just going to skip these groups and go right up the road. Posture check, it was starting to slouch. So my, my, my two theories, again, is it boils down to theory one... And I'm just rushing past these zombies because we're getting to the point we should be drowsy any time now. It's going to be late soon. So I just want to meet back up and we'll start using this as a return trip. But my assumption is one of two things is either one, at some point it was a problem, there's a change, and now it's not a problem anymore. And then the other one is that there is something that is like penalizing your attack speed and it's significant enough that your attack speed is slow enough that the zombie gets the attack off first. To me, I look at it and because you see both, both like the timing is almost always the exact same and both of you seem to like start your animation at the same moment and lock in place. My assumption is that's a scripted thing and it shouldn't be possible under normal circumstances for you to get hurt by the zombie. Like I don't actually think it's doing a normal attack in that moment. Um, I can't kill him, it says, it's, it's also almost certain that I've had zombie interrupt the short blade execution, like the one I'm targeting for the area, that was back earlier though. 
And that's what I think, is I think there was a problem, as one of my theories, I think there was a problem at some point with it. 100%. With as many people as, like, you know, have said, yeah, this is a problem that's gotten me killed, I'm like, okay, so I would assume that once upon a time, or under very specific, specific circumstances, it is an issue. I'm not denying that it's happening. I do believe it happens. What I'm trying to isolate is, okay, is this a problem that's been fixed? Or is it that, you know, the way my, my play style just, I don't end up with the circumstances that result in getting you killed? And if so, what are those circumstances? So that one, I don't do it. And two, that we as a community know that, hey, if you're going to use short blades to execute, be aware that under conditions X, Y, Z, it can be fatal. Like, that's what I want to figure out. I want to figure out the specific circumstances that that get you killed. Because I would find it hard to believe that I have done thousands upon thousands of execution animations with not once getting hurt. If it was just random chance, anytime you do it, you could get hurt. I, I would have difficulty believing that just because the, the likelihood of a whole bunch of different individuals getting hurt, and just me being the lucky one to never get hurt, doesn't doesn't fit that like it, it'd be too it'd be too extreme of an rng thing uh xander said i had it multiple times on 4161 that i was playing till recently your character was doing full you know doing the full execution animation but was missing completely well of course the zombie would bite and grab you uh, I can't kill a thing says, I think I remember seeing it in the patch notes sometime, but like I said, I still don't trust them, which is fair. Like, I I definitely would have the, um, like, if there was something that got me killed more than once in a long playthrough that felt just garbage, I would still be just super duper careful about it, just not trusting it. Um, I don't like long locked attack animations in the first place anyways, and I agree with that. Like, I... I am not a fan of the animations that hold you in place. So you'll see I actually don't even do the execution animation that much unless I feel super comfortable with just one zombie. And then usually it's just because I'm there and I'm like, I don't feel like backing up, I'm going to finish you. Uh, Xander says, since I swapped to the latest version, I've never had it again. And that's what I'm thinking is maybe it was a previous version issue. Uh, Tiny Kino, Tiny Kona sorry, says, the only problem I've had with short blades minimum is that... Uh, Clothes get ripped. Oh yeah, yeah. Short blades, long blades, axes, they destroy clothes of anything you hit. That that is actually a thing. Like they just shred clothing. Which you know is only an issue when you're first trying to get your clothing situated. Yeah, and also spike bunt weapons. Yeah. Well all you have to do is get tailoring eight. No, I'm teasing. Tailoring takes forever. Well, that's actually one of the things that'll bother me. Like, I'll take... I'll take, like, the hunting knife, for example, and I'll do an execution animation on a zombie. I'm like, okay, I very clearly just, you know, shoved a knife up under this zombie's skull. Like, this did not touch their garments. And then you look at their clothes, and all of their clothes are... You know, like, all their clothes are slashed up. And you're like, all right, let's talk game. If I kill a zombie in one stab, it doesn't matter where it is. Only one piece of its clothing should be damaged where I shoved the knife through. The rest of the clothing, assuming it's not ruined already, should be fine. Now, where we're at in the game where we're almost at 10 months, almost all the clothing is ruined, because there is a thing that as you get farther in the game, more and more of the clothing will be destroyed. I agree, Zidian. It is it is a certain satisfaction, especially when you're like you hit one with an axe. You just see like the middle of their like shirt rip out, and you're like, "Yeah, I just wrecked you, man. You just took it right to the chest. Get some." But yeah, so. Probably the next day we actually get a proper push in on Rosewood. We'll more than likely reach Rosewood. I don't know if we'll be able to get our um, our foot down in a building, but yeah. Uh, ten months in, did fuel ever run out? From the get, uh, no. So, and I mentioned this for uh, Nate the Great. 
that when you look at the fuel pumps, I don't know the exact amount, but each individual pump holds between 10 and 14,000 fuel. I don't know the exact amount. It doesn't really matter, honestly. Um, so while it is technically limited, it is effectively unlimited. Because if you consider this car, like we have been driving it for a better part of a week. Thank you the follow, Nate the Great. We've been driving for the better part of a week. That zombie's in our town. They, they die. Um, we've been driving that car for the better part of a week. Um, we haven't had to top it off, and we've used less than a fourth of a tank of gas on it. And it carries like 30 units of gas. Which means over the course of the week, we've at most probably burned like 10, 15 fuel. And that's if we're being like really generous. Um, and our generator, we have to refill it maybe once every week and a half, two weeks, kind of something like that. Maybe even longer. Uh, and that's only 10 units of gas. So you're thinking about that, over the course of like a week, I'm using maybe 25, 30 gas. And we're talking about a single pump contains between 10 and 14,000 gas. It is going to take me an absurdly long time at that little bit of gas use to burn through that. We're probably talking in-game decades to knock out one fuel pump. Um, they're having groups of players that have gone together with the purpose of trying to run the fuel pumps out of gas, who just start up like every car they can see and leave them running and have generators with as much fridges as they can ram on them to just destroy the gas and still unsuccessful in running them out. Bar on, on the default settings. I mean, sure, I'm sure someone's probably done it by now. Uh, sure, I can show the skills here in just a moment. I should not do that. We're we're smarter than that. I always do a look around, make sure you're clear at your fuel pumps. We are clear at our fuel pumps. Now I should refuel. Just in case some zombie has wandered into our area and is just waiting for the remote strike. Okay. So, as a reminder, we started our character as a quote-unquote zero to hero. So, uh... We started with zero strength, zero fitness, zero combat skills, zero everything. Like, no no skills to speak of. And this is what we worked our way up to, which is we have six fitness, getting pretty close to seven. Uh, seven strength, getting pretty close to eight. Um, five nimble, nowhere near close to leveling nimble up again in a while. That's going to be a long time. Oop, that needs fuel. We'll do that here in a minute. Um, all of our combat skills, except for spears and axes, are 7 or higher. Um, we're getting real close to 8 on short blade and maintenance. Um, our carpentry, cooking, and tailoring are now maxed. And we have... I'm just checking. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by trying to do multiple things at once. But um, uh, mechanical and metalworking skill, those are doing pretty all right. Uh, aiming is at 5, reloading is at 4. That we basically got ourselves to at about 2 months into the game and really haven't done anything with it since because just I don't particularly have a need for guns nor have we been collecting ammo that diff like much. We're not... Like, honestly, this playthrough, we do very little looting of buildings. Honestly, most of the houses, I don't even go into them. And then our survival skills like fishing and trapping and foraging, we have not done any trapping whatsoever. But um, for foraging in those, we just we haven't really been doing much of it at all. I haven't had a need to. So that's just one way, one of the things we're dealing with. All right, so I'm gonna get that out of the way. Put this back down here, and we are at just shy of ten months, uh, four thousand two hundred fifty or forty-two thousand five hundred kills. Sorry. Uh, let's eat. All right, I need to get more produce, and then I do owe a stretch. A set of push-ups and a hydrate. Give me a moment. Alright, so we got a bunch of produce for salads, I'll have to wait until they thaw. Um, where do you spawn? Uh, where do you spawn? That I can actually be very, very specific about where you spawn. I'm using Pillow's respawn mod. Uh, so right now we're in Ekron. That building right there where I have spawn, that's the, uh, the pharmacy here in Ekron. That's where I spawned. 
Uh, Xander is asking what happened to our freezer out here. Uh, zombies. Way, way, way back when it was just this one little building here and the two freezers, like none of the outside perimeter, there's not this back storage room, nothing else. Uh, zombies did attack and that was the one thing they did destroy. And the really frustrating thing is, because it's damaged, I can't pick it up or do anything to it, but it does work. And it takes half the fuel as a regular fridge. So it's like, if you think about it, it's like, this is one, this is two fridges, effectively, and this is one. But I can't move it unless I get a sledgehammer or something to destroy it. Which is pretty annoying. Hey, it's Gregory. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Alright, now bear with me for just a moment. I owe push-ups, I owe a stretch, and I owe a hydrate. So I need to catch up on that because I also am out of drink for the hydrate. So I'm going to grab the drink, do the push-ups, then come here, stretch, and then drink the drink. So I'll be right back. Yeah, no, there's there's been... As much as I love the game Path of Exile, it had some very, very serious RSI concerns. And, like, there's there's a side that says, okay, you want to consider, like... What's good? Yeah, you, you'll have lots of people talk about the um, repetitive stress injury kind of stuff that came from Path of Exile. And it's because a lot of their decisions are saying, like, they wanted you to pick items and those items to have weight. 